Okay, so um, here you see uh, how you do the reaction. So the, the clip on the right is basically one of the reactors in, uh, in our labs. It's like a typical lab scale uh, type of experiment. This is like a 250 mil reactor. It's like double jacket. So you have on the outside, you have heat control. And this, this particular experiment is just a soap-free polymerization. So you have monomer in water, you stir it, so you'll get droplets. And uh, what Nick just did, it says Holly there, but it was Nick's hand. Uh, he basically added uh, an, an initiator. And what you'll see is that when the process starts, it's like it starts to become a little bit more turbid. Yeah? It was pretty clear at the start. It starts to become a bit more turbid because you start to make oligomeric type of material and you start to make your particles. And then at a certain stage, um, this process just keeps on going on and on and on and on and on. You get more and more and more particles. Because you get particles and because the refractive index of these particles is different, the polymer refractive index is different from the water, you get more scattering and you'll end up with a white dispersion. Yeah? So you'll end up with a white, so there you go, it turns white and it turns whiter and whiter and whiter. Uh, so in this particular case, it's an acrylate polymerization. We did this to speed it up. So this one will be ready in 10 minutes or something. Uh, normally you don't want to do it that fast because you'll get some heat issues. But uh, so that, that is the essence. So you'll, you'll see clearly that you'll end up with a, with a, with a white type of uh, polymer dispersion. Polymer ping pong balls dispersed in water. So what are, what are the options there? Well, we have lots of different monomers that are possible. Yeah? Pick any. Even ethylene would work in, in, in a copolymer type of way. So butadiene, isoprene, ethylene, styrenix, methacrylates, vinyl acetate, violas. And you just have to know your polymer chemistry yeah, to kind of see why you want to use a particular one. I'm not going to go over the polymer chemistry. I just, you know, basic polymer chemistry. Hopefully you guys know. So uh, surfactants, SDS, there's lots of other surfactants that you can choose. Just look in the catalog. Uh, initiators as well. There's persulfates, azo initiators, redox initiators, chain transfer agents to make slower molecu lower molecular weights, mercaptanes. They're a bit smelly, but they work. Yeah. Buffers are used sometimes in order not to get massive pH changes. So for example, um, if you would use persulfate, potassium persulfate or ammonium persulfate as initiator, um, it has a secondary process that lowers the pH, and the secondary reaction consumes persulfate but doesn't generate radicals. So if the pH drops too much, you don't efficiently generate radicals anymore. So you put a buffer in there in order to avoid that. And then a chaser, which is basically a shot of redox initiator at the end to get rid of the last bit of monomer, so you'll end up with 99.999 and not with 90, uh, 95 or something. So um, a look at the time. I think uh, that's where we, uh, we're going to stop today. All right. Thanks all for coming.